how services and design are perceived in accounts it has a great impact on how service design is practice because every country has its own nuances and characteristics learning about these differences can be a great source of inspiration for your own practice that's why in this video we're going to explore service design in china here's the guest for this episode let the show begin hi guys this is ashwan this is service design show episode 158 Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and welcome back to the Service Design Show. On this show, we explore what's beneath the surface of service design. What are those hidden things that make the difference between success and failure? All to help you design great services that have a positive impact on people, business and our planet. Over the years, I've been approached by many service design professionals from China. We even launched the official Xiao Hongshu Service Design Show channel to give more people access to these interviews. So there definitely seems to be growing interest in the practice. But I always found it difficult to get a good sense of how service design is evolving in China. And I was really curious to learn more about what's going on. So I was lucky to get connected to Ji Hang Xiong, the guest in this episode, who has witnessed the evolution up close and even helped to shape it. Having grown up in China and now living in San Francisco, Ji Xuan is in a great position to share with us the differences and similarities. So at the end of this episode, you'll know what the state is of service design in China, which services are being designed and which ones aren't, and where the practice is heading to in the next couple of years. I learned a ton from the conversation with Xi Xuan, and I hope you will as well. If you enjoy conversations like this that help to expand your horizon and grow as a service design professional, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, as we bring a new video like this every week or so. That about wraps it up for the intro. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation with Xi Xuan. Welcome to the show, Xi Xuan. Hi, hi, Mark. How's it going? It's going awesome. It's pretty warm in uh, in the Netherlands, but uh, I heard that it's uh, w warm in other areas of the world as well. We're managing. Um, just one, we're going to talk about a topic which hasn't been covered on the show a lot, unfortunately, and I wish it was uh, covered more often. So hopefully this will be sort of uh, wow. uh, a first uh, first episode. Um, you're based in the States currently, but that's not your background, but, uh, maybe you could share a bit more about, uh, what you do today and then we'll get to what you've been doing in the past, uh, in a moment. Oh, cool. So, uh, my name is Ashwan. So I actually, my background is, I came from China. I moved to the U S about, uh, eight years, nine years ago. Uh, I was leading the design practice out there in China. Um, a company called ThoughtWorks. It's a global technology and design consultancy company. So we're probably the first company back in China, like one of the first, like doing the service design, design thinking, design consultancy out there. So right now I'm based in San Francisco. I basically do a lot of like projects solving complex problems for stakeholders, like high level you know, executives for building strategy and tech data, design, everything. So that's really my background. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we could have dived into so many different topics with you, but uh, eventually I was a bit selfish and I picked the topic of discussing service design in China because I think that's the yeah, thing no that problem. you sort of have a unique perspective on and unique experience with, but we could have picked many other topics with your experience. Uh, before we dive into that, um, we always do a lightning round, five questions to get to know you a bit better. And your oh, goal okay. is to answer them as quickly as possible. Just the first thing that comes <laughs> to your mind. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, that's all it. right. What did you want to become when you were a kid? Oh, I want to be ambassadors. I want to go to the other countries and representing my nations. That mm. hmm. was my goal. Cool. Ah, <laughs> I didn't work didn't... out, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, there, there's, there's still time. Uh, next question is if you could work from anywhere in the world, where would you like uh, to work from? 
Well, it doesn't really matter to be honest. Like travel a lot across the country, so I don't have a preference. Like anywhere, I can have a, my laptop, even in the lounge, in the airport, I can work. And Fair enough. Yes,、yeah. I, I don't have a lot of preference about、okay. cities and locations. <laughs> Uh, next question is also very interesting. I'd love to hear this one. What was your very first job? Oh, my first job. Oh, interesting. So I was working for a chip company. So in、um, basic, it's it, it was Intel. So、um, I was managing their、uh, equipment in a in the、um, laboratory. So I'm managing the equipment for preparing some courses. They're doing courses. That's my first job. I was moving all the devices around, so that's <laughs> that's about fifteen or eighteen years ago or something. Ah, cool.、Uh, you have an interesting、uh, background for sure.、Uh, next question is about books. I'm I don't know if you're an avid reader or not, but、uh, which book or books are you reading at this moment, if any? So I'm reading the book、uh, talking about the founders, the American founders.、Uh, How there are fifteen different stories. They're how they are、uh, arguing and fighting each other, but building the nation. So they are basically like a, it's a big it, to me as a big a service design project to design a a country, a new country in the new continent, right?、Mm-hmm. So that was a fascinating book talking、cool. about the American founders. Yeah, and well, I will add a link to that. And the fifth and final question that I always ask is, do you remember the very first time you heard about service design? Well, yeah, that was back in I think it's back in 2006 or something. So I was I doing a lot of thing in no no 20 I think 2007 like 07 or something. Like I was doing a lot of things around the reading a lot of things about、uh, design thinking. So every time just one pop into my、uh, reading.、So. Mm-hmm. Hmm. There is a, a community called the Service Design Network in Europe, so I was like following them. So at the moment, I w- there was not a thing back in China, but、mm. you know that, that was the first time I heard about this term、mm. about service design.、Mm. And you still have some articles, I think,、uh, online、uh, on when when you were sort of exploring, <laughs> sharing your thoughts on, on service design, right? Yeah, so I wrote a I wrote a blog,、uh, around the blog, and yeah, people were reading my blogs. So service design definitely was one of my、uh, topic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. So <laughs>、um, let's dig into the topic of today, and、uh, uh, we'll see how this conversation goes because we don't have a really、um, a fixed structure. We'll、uh, explore together、okay. uh, which areas are interesting to share. Um, <laughs> service design in China—that's the thing we're going to try to unpack, see what's going on, try to demystify it at least for me、uh, a bit more. But before we、uh, do that, or、uh, to better understand that, could you share a bit about how did you get into the design space in China? Like, how did you get、oh. in in service design back then?、Um, So I started doing the design when I was in, I think, high school. I was like, that's when I had a first like computer. I was, you know, I remember I still use the publisher as a software and design book cover and also CD album covers. So that's really just like one my, my hobby. I love like doing the layouting, fonts, that kind of stuff.、Um, then, then I. I started a job like building a systems. Like、uh, that's that's my first job. Even I was like say like running all the, moving those the equipment in the laboratory. But I have a side、uh, project which is building a system. So to running you know to really managing the course the course well、uh, for that company the chip company. So I I got a chance to do something like from working from the. Uh, the coding and also designing everything together to help my、uh, my boss and my、uh, client. I also have a lot of side projects going on. I make some money, the pocket money, by doing all the freelancer work. But I was not only doing the design; I also do coding everything. So it's more like end to end. When I joined the company called Thoworks, that was only the one year after I graduated.、Um, But at the moment, Thoworks was a technology company.、Um, it was 
that was a company like doing a lot of agile work, a software development frame uh, framework. I was the first like kind of like a designer background hired back in 2008. So I introduced a lot of practice into the company, such as using PowerPoint to do the prototyping with the client. So I showed the interface. We're building a lot of software out there. Right? You know, when when I was there, like 20, I think 08. Then a few years after, I started to create a, a design practice or design business in ThoughtWorks. That was a global thing. So we're doing a lot of different country. We'll have a lead to do that, right? So I was leading that. By doing that, I need to do a lot of like conference talk. I need to start writing uh, blogs, hiring people. That's where I. That's how I like hire those people, building a team. So when you want to build a, because Starbucks is a consultancy company. So as a consultancy company, you need to have some IP, intangible properties, right? So you need to understand like where you can build a service. So service design is definitely one thing because we're dealing with a lot of complex technology design problems for customers. So I use service design as a starting point and also design thinking, everything. Agile UX was one of the topics as well. So that's how I you know, start building the services around those, uh, I, we call it offerings, but service design is definitely one of them, right? So that's how I started design journey and building a team. I was head of design, so that's that's how I started. Mm. How how was it um, back then? Because, uh, like you said, there wasn't maybe people were doing it, but apparently there wasn't a lot of uh, information about it, or you had to get your information from other sources, other countries. How 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 was it back then? It's not even that long ago, I guess. Right. Uh, so yeah, there is a, some history, right? If you look at service design, uh, service design introduced as was introduced as the marketing tool, right? So that was, I think, back in 1982, service design is introduced, you know, by a, uh, I think it's European market, uh, European journal of marketing or marketing journal, talking about service design as a term, as a practice to for marketers to understand their, um, their, the target company or you know, market entity as well, right? It's not never be a, a pro, it's inno, it's never be an the innovation tool at the very beginning. Then you have like Bridget Bridget Mager build out this SD SDN social uh, the services design network service yeah. design network yeah. foundation like the build of the community thing, right? That's was like twenty oh four, right? And she actually started. A lot of project back in you know in Germany, so uh, serving telco company, banking, and also uh, city planning. Uh, so those are three big like scenario use cases. The service design became a thing, right? So back in China, if you compare this in China, a little bit different. Like I also like as a practice, people really because because you have the pioneers you know, from those design consultants company brought those good frameworks and concepts to China. People were doing this. I, I was like running workshop, you know, I think 15 times publicly like every year. So there are a lot of people, interest people come. But I would say there's a little bit different to compare what's going on in the Europe and also US versus China. If you look at the three topic, the three use cases, banking, and also the uh, telco, and also the social planning, uh, or city planning, right? They're really complex. And also it's service, they're all service-oriented industry. But in China, there is a special case. Those banking and telco stay owned. You don't have enough, the private sector, to do more innovation. There is more control planning, you know, top-down approach, not like bottom-up, right? The that's that's one. Second one is think about the city planning. So China, the different political system, you don't have a lot of like a choice to participate into the city planning, right? So and also like that was like I, I remember twenty before in between the 20, oh, 2010 and also 20, 2015. That was a period of time in Shanghai, for example. There are a lot of NGOs. They're doing a lot of like social innovation kind of stuff. 
That was really before 2015. Service time was quite a good thing because helping, you know, I still remember we were doing the senior care, like kind of innovation there. There are a lot of NGOs there, right? But I think after 2015, because like geopolitical you know, reason, you know, the country limiting the NGO uh, a little bit. So that's where the social innovation piece is is going down a little bit. So that's why you, if you understand the, thought, uh, the China, the environment is a little bit different. The three big use cases are not pretty much the thing there, right? But service design is still a thing. It's it's good. Like people were using that, but driving by different forces. You know, in the Europe and US, service design is really driving by community, um, the uh, universities, and also the consultancy companies because that's a framework that's read IP and people using that to help. Basically, it's offering. You're making money from it, right? But China is a little bit different. Um, the, the design in China, most of cases, that's one thing you need to understand. China, China design is driven by not the consultancy company, not the, you know, the, uh, the education system. It's by those top giant internet company. We're talking about Tencent, we're talking about Alibaba, we're talking about TikTok. But all those companies, they have the scale to create something fundamentally change how people live in China. And also they're absorbing, they're sucking all the good designer to join their company. So that's very different. Like when I moved to the US, I see here, you have Great opportunity as a designer to join a, a consultancy company. There is a, you know, there is a big reason why you want to join the consultancy company. The design is never like driven by those big giant. Like I don't, I don't see it. Maybe like Google, for example, like material design. It's just like very little thing. You're not really drive the 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 social agenda here. The impact is very different. But China is different. In China, you have Alibaba, you have those big companies, big names. They are hiring uh, the designer. They're putting a lot of money to hire those designers. Right? A lot of design conference right now was ran by the big companies, not really the community. You don't see any design conference, like grassroots, community-based. It's all run by those um, big companies. So that's a situation that's you see this design service design is a little bit different because those big giant companies running uh, those agenda. So uh, that definitely helps to understand uh, a bit more about what's going on in our uh, preparation for this call. You also mentioned like if we want to get into understanding service design in China, we basically mm -hmm. have to sort of uh, so double click on, on service and on design. So maybe we can do that a bit more. Like, um, how do you feel? What is the perspective on services that you see in, uh, quote unquote, the West versus how services are perceived in China? I think that also plays an important part, how service design is practiced. I think this is a big topic because to me, like um, design or service uh, to me is, is part of the social the social system. It just it's part of it. It's really hard to articulate and to describe it when you do not have a lot of knowledge to understand the different aspects of how the society is running. There is economical side of economical side of saying. There is a cultural side of thing. Historical side of thing. A lot of thing. Is working are working together to determine there is a service out there. People accept to it, right? So that's why when I live in, in the U.S., I see, for example, labor cost is really uh, really expensive. For example, right now I'm running this new flooring project, I install a new floor. I realize the floor is like 20k, but you spend like 25k for the laboring, right, to install it. That's never be a case in China. So economical model is very different. Um, so that's how when you understand China, you have to go deep a little bit to understand there are, there are so many aspects to define a service. Maybe you think it's a great service in the US or Europe, 
it's not a good case in in China. So I would say my oh my challenges my arguments really doesn't really matter like to because people are talking about like we should learn in between the China and the other rest of the world. But to me, it's I don't think we need to learn. That's that's the thing. Like because because there are a lot to learn. You need to learn the rest of the other thing rather than this service. The service as a result of the, all the aspect working together to create something. Right? You don't know. You don't need to learn the result. You learn why. What's going on around us? Like try to learn how people like family think about the family, think about the culture, history. There are a lot of the other things. The least thing, the last thing you want to learn is service self, because you cannot copy the service. You know, uh, I, I still remember like a few years back, I was in, in China running some project. It's very interesting. I was selling, I was building a very complex system for selling luxury cars, right? Then I realized every time I went to the company, the, the client company, in front of the building, you you see those uh, like, like people. Are, uh, uh, it's um, a lot of riders. They're sending all the you know the, the food and also package delivery stuff, right? Every morning, the four hour, three hour, they're playing games, the cars and playing games. That is phenomenal. Like when I l- remember that situation, I was like, oh god, there there it's a it's a social event. A lot of the writer because in the morning you don't have a lot of orders, so the people just t- you know taking the, the the free time like playing games and having some chatting. That's a social event. That nuances you don't really have that back in the U.S. But behind that is the big service design. It's it's delivering service. It's delivering experience there's a com- a convenience experience like how people are keep saying like china have the great like experience of like taking orders uh, super fast but that's the that's something like this you, your convenience is sacrificing people's you know because people can spend time like doing this like help you like they're sacrificing that the labors i would say that the people they're real people they have the different need. They're socialing. They're doing the social. They're they have family. So there are a bunch of things going on there. So back to my point, the service itself is you never learn the service because service is a result. You you probably want to learn the other aspect, those nuance nuances, those com, con, uh, similarities, those stories around the service. So that's really like people keep saying like this one. What's the point of you know, China are learning between the China and also West. I keep saying like, you don't learn service. Service is nothing you don't need to learn. You learn those aspects, the stories around those service because that how service became a service because those different other things are surrounding the service itself. So that, that's my really point mm-hmm. that you don't need to learn. You don't, I don't think you can learn or you well, don't need yeah. to learn. <laughs> well, we'll get into that a bit more. I think there are. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to learn more about that, about learning, uh, and I totally get that services are the result of the needs uh, and of the context and yeah. of the heritage. Like, uh, uh, but uh, the thing is, I I definitely can imagine that there are different uh, generic needs maybe that people have around services that f- flow from culture, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but. I also want to double click on on that design ex- aspect mm-hmm. of uh, mm-hmm. service designs. So maybe once again, mm-hmm. just share your thoughts on how you feel design, design yeah. is perceived in China, and also maybe like where is it coming from? How has it evolved, and how does that compare to how we know it here in the West? Design in China is really practical. It works. It works. It doesn't work. People just like kill it and do another one. Right, so I would say comparing to the U.S. and other countries, I would say that prototyping costs is much much cheaper. Um, you can, people are, I would say like people are not the cost things like people don't care too much about the cost in terms of the implement. In, people are not arguing for because usually in the U.S. you need design thinking to argue to gather people together to make decisions. There is a lot long process of making decisions, right? 
Back in China, is a little bit. Everyone is fast. Everything, everyone is fast. Everything is fast. It's make decision is making super fast, because when you have the young generations like my age, I'm almost like forty. Then you have the the key population of that age, because、um, making decision, decision maker, so they can take risk. So risk. When you have a generation like who can take a lot of risk, when you design something, you tend to make quicker decision. That create maybe cost wise is the process cost is much you know small.、Um, so in that case, you don't care too much about the approach. You know, China had this practical thinking like from Deng Xiaoping was talking about no matter it's a white cat or a black cat, like when you catch a mouse, <laughs> that's a, it doesn't matter, right? So. China is. I, I see people are accepting those concepts and frameworks from the outside, pretty open. In the world, they they want to learn new things, but also they are abandoning thing a lot. They don't have a a long term hobby or or interest into one thing and keep doing that. They're absorbing like so many different things to create their own methodology, which is no methodology. They just do it. <laughs> So that's one fascinating aspect I learned from my ch- Chinese, you know, colleagues and also client. They're open to new, learn new thing, but they don't stick to it. They don't like say, "I need this process, do this," because I love the framework. They say, "No, you know, we do it, we don't do it. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, if it works, it works, right?" So that's really design side of thing. The China is way more like practical. The other country. That's my observation, because、um, they can definitely create something. Because they had the scale. Like, for example, I was living in the condo, like back in China in Beijing. There are fifty fifty thousand people in that one community. Fifty thousand people. You can do a lot of testing with fifty thousand people living one. Because that's the difference. Like you have big population, they're cluttered into one space. You can do a lot of innovation with them. So testing is never be a big problem. So cost is lower. The process cost is definitely lower. They're so, really practical. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> really, pr- yeah, really practical, really fast. And I'm sort of trying to reflect at the same time.、Uh, what does that mean for the design process? And to be honest, like you said, we don't. On the one hand, we don't care about the design process. We care about the outcomes and the results that it brings. And if we can do it faster.、So, Yeah. There is a yeah. yeah. So there is a good thing, a bad thing. The good thing is everyone is focused on outcome, focus on result. They're very or result oriented. You know, I want to do this. I want this number. I get this number, regardless regardless of the approach. It doesn't matter, right? But the bad thing is, I don't think backing because because I I keep remembering like try to think about the, what happened in the last like ten years. There's nothing really from there to come up to contribute to the community in terms of the theory framework. Nobody's worth talking about because the people do not have time to think about practices, think about framework, think about methodology. What's useful, what's not. People do not have time to stay and wait and think about, rethink about the practice. So that's my really the bad thing I see from China, which is I blame China to. Not having people thinking about those framework and practice, and to contribute the design com- community globally, because as a as a community, you need those things, new things, come to you create a framework, a practice to help the community design community to grow. So that's something like I see there is a bad thing, good thing. There are too rush to you know, do some intelligence you know, and share outside the world to to the outside world. So, so that's that's good and bad thing. That's about, that's yeah. yeah, that's interesting because yeah, I I wrote down it's probably a lot、uh, of things sh- short term oriented, and when you say it's、yeah. I don't I don't see anything from the last ten years. That's、uh, on the one hand, that's really a, a shame. Like you wanna you you wanna have something that you can build upon, that's something that can grow, something that sort of surpasses maybe even generations. Like、um, I don't know classics.、Um, And that's the thing that you see is missing. Yeah, people don't have time. But the, the but the、mm-hmm. when I say that, 
But I said it's a bad thing.、Mm -hmm. There was a good thing after、mm -hmm. the bad thing. You have、mm -hmm. good thing, a bad thing, but from the bad thing, you have another good thing, which is it. To me, I think this is we're talking about digital. Digital is about winners takes all, right? Once you win, you always have people to help you create a pra practice to help you. Like that's what I because even I challenge that China doesn't have the, the thing to you know, to output to the world. But one day, if China wins, you know people will create a framework for China. So that's it. Doesn't really matter. Like that's really my thinking because. In the five years, the ten years scale, it's a bad thing. It's you know nothing happened. Not because so when I look at those, the industry sharing those you know the design conference, I don't see a good topic, right? But maybe after five years, ten years, there's a another period of time like China because you need time for China to speed up. Because think about the Europe, Europe,、uh, European community. We're talking about like thirty years, forty years. Fifty years of history of applied,、um, you know, design, right? It's 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 never be a thing like th in China, like fifteen years ago, right? So we still have time. Yeah.、Uh, again, this is because what I say. All my my point here is really the the situation in China is because you have tech, you have tech giants, you have Alibaba, who has like. Tencent, those giant company, they don't have an obligation to create a framework, a practice. You know, usually, those things are driving by university and consultancies, right? But those two things are not well developed in, in China. So maybe that requires another fifteen years to create a, you know, a driving power from the education and consultancy,、mm. consultancies. Then you're gonna have something like. Because most of the innovation framework is really from Europe,、mm. I don't even see something here and back in the U.S. I don't see good、um, frameworks. So、um, when you say that、uh, innovation and design is driven or eaten by these tech giants, and their goal is to move fast and the winner takes、yeah. it all, like、uh, totally get that. If we look at the at the day to day services people use in China,、mm -hmm. and you. I can add that. Like it, it, it's huge, of course.、Uh, services are everywhere. How who who is taking care of them? Like, are do people care? Like, is there somebody who's、uh, is there a movement that is interested in improving? Like you maybe said, healthcare or banking. Well, banking is regular,、uh, sort of state owned, regulated. Yeah. yeah so. What's the take on that? Like, who who is looking at the all the other services that aren't maybe tech driven, or maybe is every te service tech driven? I don't know.、Uh, my argument is really there's only two industries, and a lot of like private sectors and internet giants can do. Not everyone, like even financial services is it's sort of highly regulated.、Uh, there are some issues there out there. The two industries only the entertainment. And also the including social and gaming, everything that's that's part. Another one is commerce. Everything about commerce. So if you think about the service design, like maturity, if country, if you think, because I keep think thinking about the five things about the five pillars of the service design, like how you define the maturity of the service design in the in the one society, commerce, entertainment,、uh, and slash lifestyle, and also the、uh, healthcare. Financial services and also social innovation, the governance side of thing. So China is super advanced in the first one and two: entertainment, lifestyle, and also the commerce. And they're really like connecting between each other. So a lot of like good innovation in this space. How you create? Because even like right now, if you look at the in the U.S., social and shopping are not really together. Not really. But in China, it's highly connected. You have you know, the, the the internet celebrities that、uh, they're selling product. You don't see that thing in China,、uh, in the U.S., even Europe. I don't think there's big thing. Like it's still like separated. But China, because there's two things: social and also commerce, driving by Tencent and TikTok, and also Alibaba and JD. They're driving agenda, driving the movement of this two space. Two spaces, 
Alibaba was trying to create a connection between this commerce and finance, financial services, because, but it kind of like failed or you know, postponed, I don't know, because finance services is highly regulated. If you, write, if you read the news, there is a thing, right? So in that case, the rest of the three, the, the you know the city planning, social innovation, uh, I think healthcare and also the financial services are not really moving so fast because the driving forces you don't see a big driving force behind that. Like maybe financial services, you have big bank, you know they're for a long time, like for example, China Merchant Bank, they're buying our service for a long time. So they're doing a lot of social innovation and design, uh, design uh, uh, service design activities out there. There are a lot of things there. But you don't see a big driving force of the three. Because in the U.S., either you have community, you have consulting company changing the game, but you also have you know, those big private companies driving the changes like like Deutsche Bank, for example, they're in Singapore, uh, the DBS, they're driving those changes. But then, because in China, there are a lot of state owned territories, uh, it's hard. But I would say, like the other two, super fast, like super crazy. If you go there, you can, you, you will be overwhelmed, like to see how deep those two things are connected, like entertainment and also commerce. People spend time in, the, in those things, right? That's why you see those companies like going abroad, like to think about TikTok and also the Xin. Xin is another like big commerce platform um, from China. So, mm. so that's why you see the two things coming yeah. up yeah. from those two. Yeah. The first two. Yeah. So like you said at the start, it's really about understanding the culture and like which services can even be sort of influenced and where you can... Um, help yeah. and make progress and try things. The other thing I was curious about, and I don't know how much you still have uh, sight on that, but um, are young students in China interested in pursuing design? Like, is design growing in the education space? Do you know anything about that? Oh, so fast. I think it's like, because I was, um, when I was hiring my team, back in 20, 2009 or something, 2010, I realized the university is a great uh, place to hire. Um, so I actually built a lot of good relationship with the different university in, in Tsinghua or in uh, I think China Media um, University. There, that's when you see those, comp uh, those universities are building new courses. Um, talking about service design, talking about design thinking. That's because if, if you calculate, it's been te ten years. So that means the first graduate from that subject right now is already like five years to six year working experience. Right. I definitely see a good, very uh, it's growing trend. Like the uh, designs, uh, designers are. I would say like design education is growing up super fast. You see those, you know, the university opening new courses. For example, like 15 years ago, there is no course called like in, even interaction design. There's no subject like that, right? Now you have a lot of like courses, you have the subjects talking about design. That's one thing. Second thing is the graduate, the students, uh, I think, it's growing. Also, a phenomenal in a very phenomenal speed. Like I see really good resume every year from you know either students like going to the other countries and come back. The resume is really good. Um, so I think the education system is growing and also it's building out the foundation to because to me the education system is is. Is a machine to create a new graduate, new new employee, the labors to the to the community, to the industry. So in that to that end, I think is growing, and also I think the designers see. That's why the, also I think thing I argue like service design sometimes is for the design student to to start, but maybe it takes because that's an argument. I said this to my you know the new hire. I said like even you learn the service design at university, 
but you probably do service design of 10 years after you join the company, you join, you start the job because service design is about solving complex problems. It's, so, it's about co-creating value across the stakeholders. But if you are at the very bottom doing the hands-on stuff, you don't have opportunity to do that kind of design. So lower your acceptation. Like even you learn a lot of things about service design, good approach, but you probably need another 10 years to really experience the service design, right? So, but people are, again, like back to the point, uh, uh, your question, yes, you know, people are so interested in this, those topics. It's adding value to resume as well. Um, when you hire, you hire people. As I, when I hire, I always want my, um, the, the graduate to present a good story, tell a good story about their design. If something related to service design, it's big plus one because you are solving you know, the, the, the problem in the reality. You're solving real life problem and complex problem. You understand those nuances from the social aspects, so which is adding the point to your resume. So that's the reason why there is an economical dr uh, driver behind that to learn service design as well. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's a good thing, and I I know that the community is growing there, and that's that's also one of the reasons I'm so interested in uh, speaking to more people who sort of understand and see what's going on there. Because, like you said, al although it's not captured yet, maybe to the degree that we're capturing it over here, there are smart people. They're doing smart things. We just uh, need to sort of surface them. And, and the other question I'm curious about is mm. sort of. Um, What's next? What What do you see happening in, in the, the near future? Like you said, it's dominated by the tech giants, like other services are highly regulated, which is hard to uh, sort of uh, let service down loose on them. There are students so from the supply side, that thing is growing. Like, how is this going to evolve over the next few years? So I will say um, everything you want to forecast the future, you, you basically focus how China as an economy grows in the next like 10 years, right? From like, I was born in 1982, right? But from 1982 to now, the wealth in China increased about 77, 77 times. That's a huge change, right? But in the next like 20 years, do, I, do we still have that scale of change? I don't know, right? But China still have a lot of potential. You still have the you know, third tiers or fourth tier or even fifth tiers of, of cities. So to me, I would say in the 15 years time scale, I don't see a big change in, in this first tier cities like Shanghai or Beijing or Shenzhen. So those are modern cities. You don't really see big difference. I don't think they're, they're big difference. The real big differences in those cities, I think the average GDP is less than $8,000 per year. Those cities will have a lot of changes. So the design changes, the service will go to those cities how people behave today in those first tier city will go to those third or fourth or fifth tier of cities. So that's the change. So not really in the first tier city. You don't see a lot of changes. I don't think. And also the country, the power, there is a, we call it common, we call it like, a, you know, getting rich will be, be healthy together. That's really from the top, right? So they, also want to drive this to increase the life quality, the economical you know, income for those you know, the third or even the fourth or fifth cities. So the big change would be there, but not really in the first tier city because we're, we're good enough, nothing to complain. I don't think that we should complain. Um, so that's really my point of view on if you ask a change in you know, 15 years. So the change was just if you want to do something in China, like design something, go to the third or fourth and fifth cities, um, the tier cities. Try to 
use what you learn from the first cities, first tier city, and migrate those things to because to me, the China will be the very similar to the U.S. Every city very similar. So that's when I compare. Europe is different. I, I wouldn't. Europe is different. Different world. I would say China and the U.S. kind of similar. They're very practical. They're that's but there's no offense. Like there are two countries. Only two countries work hard. It's China and the U.S. I think China, the Americans working really hard. So that's really my argument. China one day the living style will be like the U.S. Um, I don't think there's a lot of elegant side of thing like you see the fancy stuff. You don't see a lot of fancy stuff in the in the U.S. Same thing in China because that's that how it works. You know? So I love the practical side of you know uh, my people. And also, I love the practical side of the American people. They don't care about the fancy brand and that kind of stuff. So that's that's my my focus. Mm-hmm. You know, in fifteen years, mm-hmm. and it would be like the U.S. You know, a lot of like shopping malls. So it's it's boring, but <laughs> we'll but get it's, Yeah, it's super <laughs> interesting that you say like some cities are quote unquote done. Like they're, it's done. they're yeah, they're, it's they're done. done. But the, done. There, there are uh, tons of other cities where they're yeah w- that are going through that growth phase still. Yeah, where... and don't get me wrong. That other cities we're talking about the ten million people, exactly. fifteen million people, a million people. There's yeah. a lot of yeah. opportunity out there. Super. Yeah, and and they will benefit from having that design experience, that design. Uh, skills, yeah. mindset, that sort of, like you mentioned, first-generation cities sort of lacked, but uh, they turned out okay. Uh, but the other yeah. cities will sort of be able to build upon uh, a more advanced yeah. design, but, yeah. knowledge, and practice. So to me, the first 20 years from 20, uh, 2000 to now, like 2022, first like 20 years, it's about migrating the design, the services from the Europe, from the um, uh, the US to the first tier or even second tier of city. But next movement, there's nothing to migrate from the US or Europe to the first tier. Shanghai, if you go to Shanghai, it's, a little bit, it's just like a European kind of, uh, city. And that's no difference. But there is a big movement from the first tier cities, all the services, all the ways working, how people um, uh, leave, we'll go to the third or fourth or fifth tier city. That will be the next 20 years. Not really the first tier city. That's it. End game. For, I'm saying there's no opportunity. There's some opportunity, but it's very limited area because there's nothing to learn. Hmm. There's not much thing to learn to migrate from the, the uh, Western countries. Hmm. If um somebody approaches you with this question i don't know how often you get this question like uh if there's one thing i should know about service design in china Mm -hmm. what is it like maybe what's the one thing you hope people will take away from this conversation and remember about service design in china (laughs) it's very okay i don't so I will just like to why you want to know, right? I'll ask a you know counter question, like why you want to know about like service design in China? Is my argument is really when you because I don't like people to say, oh, because you're doing service design, you're you're different. Like, because I the one thing I hate to do with I'm in my company, I wouldn't call a, a role a service designer. Mm-hmm. That somehow create like a privilege for a role to say, I'm designing service. Oh, you're designing product or application. I, you're that, that. I don't, you're not fancy enough. I'm fancy. So when people want to ask, okay, what do you, how do we learn about service design in China? I'll be a little bit hesitant to answer even that question. Like, do you, what do you know? What do you mean? Like, why you want to know? Because China, any, as I said, like, China is very practical place. It's just a method. It's just a practice. It doesn't really matter. Like people were building design, like building new service, designing service. It doesn't matter. You you do this by you know in somebody's head or you know, or, or collaborating with different stakeholders or using a, a terminology called service. It doesn't really matter, right? So so I'll say like 
better question will be how do you because I was there like okay service design I have no comment like you know it's just a, it's a thing um it's a it's a movement but comparing to the other social movements it's nothing it's worth because China everything is moving so fast so you because because in the Europe or the uh, the Western countries is a little different every simple smaller thing you call it movement. But in China, it's different. It's not movement. It's it's typhoon. It's a tsunami. It's it's different. It's not movement. It's because that's that's different. Like China, that's because China's whole logic is about social movement. It's about social experiment. China itself is was originated as a social move uh, experiment it's about experimenting new alternative way of how the like, human being is like doing things and living in the in this world is china is it it is the alternative comparing to other countries it's uh, it's working right then if you ask it, this this is not a movement like socially also like uh, service design is not a movement it's just a thing comparing to other movement nothing but I think it's still a good thing. People are learning it. People, it's a it's a good topic, and people are doing that. But if you ask me, what's the situation out there? I'll I'll say that it's not a movement because compare. It's not because it is not a movement. It's com- comparing to other things. It's it's just small. Mm. I, That's really my yeah. answer. <laughs> Thanks. And the way I sort of uh, try to wrap my head around this conversation is that uh, it's there. It's alive. It's growing. Uh, it's way less formalized because there is no time to formalize. Things are changing. Yes. Yeah, things There's are no changing and moving it. all the time. And sort of, it feels like it's uh, a lot of things are moving and happening at the same time. And at some point where things sort of crystallize and maybe when they do slow yeah. down, there will be more yeah. time to yeah. Yeah. to formalize it and, and uh, see what actually has emerged. But now it's like, there is a lot of dust and things are happening. People are at work and don't really care about frameworks, there, models. There is a there is a old saying in China. We call it like you don't get fish in a clear water. You only <laughs> you only get fish in the muddy water. The clear water, the fish are gone. And there's a lot of muddy water in, right now. <laughs> that's a lot of muddy water right there's now. There's a lot of muddy water right now. <laughs> so, that's why the service design is not a thing, is because there's a muddy water. Like yeah. you just like catch all the fishes. Yeah. Fish. Maybe that's a good title for this episode. Jishwan, I wanna thank you for sort of sharing your thoughts. And I I'm I have a lot more questions, but for now, uh let's keep it at this. Uh super interesting. Um just for me to demystify and try to better understand, have more awareness, like brush up that blind spot that I uh, that I have around what's going on in other areas of the world. I hope that this topic can be covered more often on the show. Uh, but for now, I really want to thank you for making time and, uh, and getting on this chat with me. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. What is your biggest takeaway from this conversation? Make sure to leave a comment down below. We'd love to know. If you made it this far, I'm assuming that you enjoyed this conversation. To make sure you don't miss any of the future episodes, click that subscribe button so you'll be notified when a new conversation comes out. My name is Mark Fontaine and I want to thank you for being part of this community. Thanks for watching to the Service Design Show and I'll see you very soon in the next video.